to lift them up and speak well of them. So if you could, uh, if you could disciple and mold a church member, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> what would you want them to be like? And that's a thought to just let run through your mind. If you could disciple somebody, then what would you want them to be like? You know, how would you want them to turn out? Uh, that's what we do with our kids, don't we? We disciple them and train them and teach them. And uh, so how about uh, in Acts 4, run into a fellow I mentioned earlier a while ago called Barnabas, you know. And uh, if he lived in our day, we'd probably call him Barney, you know, instead of Barnabas, you know. So everybody call him Barney, you know. And uh, when you think of Barney, who do you think about? Somebody tell me. Huh? I can't hear you. Everybody's talking at the same time. Barney Fine. Yeah. Deputy Barney Fine. That's who we think about, ain't it? Barney Fine. I worked with a guy at the sheriff's department, Jim Hagee, and he he played Barney a lot. You know, he, he's, he's a little short guy, and, and he's, as, he's as wiry and as cocky as they come, you know, and just bounce around all the time, and, and he's got that kind of a whiny voice, you know, and he had an old uh, 61 Ford, black and white with a bubble light on top of it. You know, still got it. It's set there on Center Street. You can see it sitting right there behind his house. And he played Barney a lot, you know. So he was a he was a funny type of guy, an encouraging type of guy, you know. And uh, so Barnabas here was, uh, he was named Barnabas there. And the name uh, means encouragement. Actually, Barnabas wasn't. The name that his, his parents had gave him, the Bible says he, he was called Joses. But the apostles looked at the man and they named him Barnabas. And uh, the name Barnabas means encouragement. That's what it means, encouragement. And uh, the Greek word that we translate encouragement or consolation is the word parakletos. And that's the Greek word, what it means. And you see the word parakletos, then you go to John 14 where he's talking about the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is called Paracletos in John 14 and uh, the uh, John 14 26 it's the same word uh, so here's a man who who does for others what the Holy Spirit does for a child of God and Jesus told us in John 14 there that the Holy Spirit that he would come alongside us to encourage us to comfort us to give us hope and to get us on our way. The disciples were worried when Christ said he was going away and he was leaving and Jesus said, I'm going away, but he said, I'll send you another comforter. The word another means one just like me. You'll be as comfor comfortable with him as you were with me. And uh, because the Holy Spirit was one of the Trinity and God himself too. So the Holy Spirit there was an encourager there. So we'll look at five ways here very quickly, you know, when we talk about encouraging people, how to encourage uh, your neighbors, your friends, your classmates, your teammates, your fellow believers, people you meet wherever you go, you know, to be an encouragement to them, you know. The greatest way to start a conversation there is to is, is, is start out by being friendly with someone, you know, shaking their hand, how you doing, you know, be an encouragement. To them there, you'd be amazed at the doors it'll open for you to witness to people and tell them about Christ, you know. And uh, so, number one, you can encourage others. You can encourage others by practicing stewardship in your life. We're looking at, at Barnabas here and some things that he did there. Now, Barnabas had some land in Acts chapter four, the latter part of the chapter. You can read about it there. And uh, he sold it, and he brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet in verses 36 and 37. He talks about that story. In a time of persecution and poverty in Jerusalem, he had much to give. And he sold that property, took the money, brought it to the apostles so the apostles could distribute it out to the families and people in need there. So the stewardship is, is, a, is a good way. People that... that uh, are faithful in their tithes and offerings in church, that's stewardship, you know. The money comes in, the money goes out, and supporting missionaries, helping people, doing good things for a lot of people. Furnishes a building, uh, lights, heat, air, and all the facilities and things that we have. Stewardship does those things to make a place for people to come. And uh, when we give to other people, 
individually to help those people out, that's part of stewardship too. When you see someone that has a need, you know, you try to meet that need. Over in First John, the Word of God tells us there about meeting those needs. And when we see someone that has a need, you know, we try to meet that need and try to help those people out. It's a great blessing there. You never outgive God there, and uh, because you'll always, you'll always get more in return than you ever gave when you give uh, in the right way, in the right mode for glory of God. And it's a great blessing there. So he saw others had needs, and he moved to meet those. The second thing there is, the way you encourage others is by extending friendship to people, being friendly with people. And, and uh, you know, you, uh, you can look forward in Acts 9 there when Paul, prior to, right there at Acts 9, prior to that, he was going to arrest people is what he was doing. And that's when, that's when God struck him down to the ground and, and dealt with his heart and life there, and Paul became a Christian and was saved. You see him later on in the end of chapter 9 there, preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified, that he is the Messiah and the Savior there. And Paul began to make friends and fellowship, draw people to Christ there, and God used him there in a great way there for the church. And uh, now he was preaching about the one that he was trying to uh, uh, have people put in jail for talking about. Yeah, he was an enemy, but he, now he was a friend. When, uh, when other believers there feared him deeply, when they knew he was coming, they were in great fear. And then after this great change in his life, after he was saved and born again, then he began, they began slowly to let him in, and he became one of the best friends they ever had there, you know. Uh, when someone gets saved, uh, or new people come to this church here, and, uh, you know, we need, we need to let us uh, show them love and friendship. Now, about each Sunday, there's someone here that's new, that's visiting, just about every Sunday, I've noticed. And people need to go to those people and let them know that they appreciate them, thank them for coming, and, and hope they enjoy their service here. And there's people in our church that's never went to anybody to shake their hand. Uh, you know, just never make it a point, you know. If if you came somewhere and visited and met everybody in here sometime or another when they were looking for a church, was visiting a church, you know, and uh, if people, if nobody spoke to you, nobody shook your hand, and uh, nobody said howdy, uh, you probably wouldn't come back, would you? I, I wouldn't. Matter of fact, I might not even stay till the service is over. I'd just get up and leave. But... Uh, Showing kindness and friendliness to people and making them welcome has a great impact on people's lives there. And uh, so we all need to make a point of that, to look around, you know. Not only people visit for the first Sunday, but there's people that's been coming here for months and months and months. And there's many people in the church, and everyone went up and said howdy to them, you know. And uh, that's, uh, that's not showing ourselves very friendly, is it, you know. Jesus said if we want to have friends, we must show ourselves friendly to people and be friendly and and uh, I've never had a problem personally you know uh, since I've been an adult of talking to people you know just going up and striking up a conversation and talking to people there I enjoy that so you can be friendly that's a good way to uh, to uh, be an encouragement to people you know show them some kindness there a third way you can encourage others is by building partnerships with people there and uh, in Acts chapter 11, uh, still talking about Barnabas here, we see a revival going on there in Antioch. And the church of Jerusalem there had heard about all this going on down there, and they sent Barnabas down to check it out cause to make sure it wasn't a cold or something. They said, there's something going on down there, you know. And there's people just talking about it and everything. So Barnabas goes down there and he checks it out and he saw the grace of God in these people and God working greatly in them. And uh, then uh, he went and recruited Paul and brought Paul down there. And then him and Paul together done a great ministry there through God. Now I know some people uh, who don't have Baptists on their name, but they're saved people. Now, we differ in doctrine on some things, but I know that they love Jesus. 
And I get along with these people, and I fellowship with them, you know. And uh, I've worked with some over the years. I got along great with them, you know. We were just great friends. Now, we, we had some doctrinal issues on some things, and when we talked about those issues, I never compromised my stand on it. And uh, we should never do that. But, you know, just uh, some people have the idea, you know, if, if, if you're a Baptist, then you don't fellowship with other people, you know. I was over to hospital visiting some people one day, and there was two ladies in there in a the room with her, matter of fact. And she, she was from a Methodist church. And uh, I was talking to her. I said, a family member or somebody here in the church. can't remember exactly who it was now. But the two ladies there with her, you know, they were talking to her. And, and uh, she told those two ladies, she said, she said, uh, it's Mr. Malone here. He said, uh, he goes to Holy Mountain Baptist Church. And they said, uh, well, we'll forgive him for that. And uh, I said, I'm so blessed that y'all forgave me for that. I thank you so much for it. And uh, I don't think they took that very well. But uh, anyway, before I left her, I had them laughing, and she was laughing, and I was laughing. We was all having a big time, you know. <clears throat> and... Uh, once we got to laughing and talking, then I got to in, inject uh, a clear presentation of the gospel of Christ to them, you know. And uh, they thanked me for that, you know. I went on my way. So just because somebody don't have the same name on them don't mean that uh, we can't show kindness to them and love to them. You be friendly with everybody and uh, show them kindness and show them love and, and respect. If they're wrong in their beliefs... Uh, if they're wrong in their doctrine, uh, lost and on the road to hell, you may be the very one that can reach them for crying. But you'll have a greater chance to reach them by showing them some love and kindness than you will by stubbing your nose at them there and going on. So <clears throat> we can do that. We can build partnerships like that. So uh, the fourth thing there we can look at tonight about encouraging other people is uh, developing leadership. And we develop leadership in this church. We have leaders in this church, uh, men that have been here many years. And uh, some are older men, uh, some are much younger men that are in the leadership in this church. And uh, they do a good job, you know, of leadership. People look to them for guidance. People look to them for advice. Uh, they deal with the things in, uh, in the church, matters and stuff, you know, that uh, need to be dealt with there. And so leadership speaks well. Now, after Barnabas, I said earlier there, after he brought the, the Christians in Antioch into a fold, he went there and he, he, he got, a, got a church started. They, have, they was having a revival and he got a church started, which was in the houses and things. Then he found Paul and he brought him back to Antioch where they spent a year there teaching disciples in Acts chapter 11. You can read about that. Now, Barnabas, he developed Paul there. He took Paul under his wing. when He, when he, he was the first one who took him before the disciples and introduced him and told him how the Lord had uh, saved him and had changed his life there. And uh, you can read about that in Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 19, Acts chapter 26. Paul talks about his conversion. Uh, and... So Barnabas, he developed Paul there. You take people under your arm and you work them into a leader by being an example. You, you, you just teach them and train them and work with them there. That's why it's good for older Sunday school teachers to bring on a younger teacher in the class with them to help bring those people on. So then one day they can take over there. And... Uh, in the ladies' groups, they do that a lot. They, 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 take on, uh, they take these younger people and teach and train them. God teaches the Word of God that the older women should teach the younger women how to, you know, how to live, how to, how to be discreet, how to, how to act, how to carry themselves, how to dress, how to conduct themselves. Very important there. So you, you, but you do that by being examples to people. We have to be examples, you know. It's not, you know, do as I say, but it's, you know, uh, do as I do. You know, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And that's how he brought his leadership on there. And the fifth and last thing here we can do to be an encourager is uh, we are encourage others by rebuilding relationships with other people. If you have relationships that are fractured, 
and you have, uh, you know, in your family, uh, your workplace, uh, the church, uh, especially the church, you know, if you got fractured relationships, you need to rebuild these, you know. It's hard to sit over here and try to listen to the Word of God and try to worship God, and over here sits somebody and you can't stand them. You ain't spoke to them in five years, don't want to be around them. If they go out that door, you go out this one. If they go out that, if they go out this door, you head out that one, you know. Uh, that's not pleasing to God. There's no room in our hearts for animosity. There's no room in our hearts for hatred. And, uh, you know, the Word of God says, how can you love God, whom you have say, say you love God, whom you have not seen, and hate man, who you have seen? people surround you all the time so we need to rebuild those there Paul gives us an example of that <clears throat> excuse me there was a strong contention in Acts 15 between Paul and Barnabas after they they'd got back from a mission trip and they were getting ready to go on another one there and Paul wouldn't work with a young man named John Mark John Mark was on that mission trip with him, and somewhere along the way, he bailed out and left and went back home. And uh, so there was uh, Barnabas wanting to take John Mark along, and, and Paul said, no, no, we're not taking him, you know. But Paul, during uh, uh, his life as he grew on there, uh, Barnabas took John Mark with him, and Paul took Silas with him. And Barnabas nurtured John Mark and brought him along. And then we see over in 2 Timothy chapter 4, where Paul was writing his swan song here before his death. Uh, he was in prison. At this time, he knew he wasn't going to be released from prison. He knew that he was going to die. He knew death was there. So, he, you know, when he wrote uh, the, some of these pastoral epistles, and he wrote, and he wanted to see Timothy. He wanted to see uh, some of his friends there. And he asked uh, if he, that he wanted to see John Mark. Bring John Mark with you, he said. He said, for he's useful to me for the ministry. So Paul had, had that, all those uh, hard feelings he had had toward John Mark had, had gone away. The Holy Spirit had mended those. He had saw Barnabas take John Mark and develop him and build him up into a useful minister for God. So if there's, if there's someone that you've got uh, odds against, somebody you don't like, you know, uh, the best thing in the world you can do is pray for that person. Call their name out before the Lord. And uh, that's, I don't say it's an easy thing, but I say it's the right thing to do. And try to go to that person and mend these relationships if you can, you know. If it's something you've done, you know, uh, you need to swallow your pride and, and ask them to forgive you. If it's something they've done, you know, you need to tell them, you know, to talk it out with them, you know, and tell them. But you need to mend these things in your heart if you can. If you do what you're supposed to do and what's required of you by God to do, then God releases you from that. And you've done all you can do. But now to have that in your heart, uh, you can't be right with God because there's, there's something there that's blocking you between what God wants to do with you and what God wants to do for you because you've got that, that anger in your heart or that hatred in your heart. It's not pleasing to the Lord there. So let me get it out. So these are some things here that will help us along there, uh, help us to encourage other people. Uh, be an uplift to other people and be an example to other people. It's a very important ministry to have, you know, to reach people. And uh, we all need to remember that. We all need to try to practice it in our lives, every single one of us. And uh, to bring joy in people's lives, you know. If, um, if you're happy and, and you've got joy in your heart, uh, it's a whole lot easier for people to talk to you. Than it is if you're if you're bitter, you're mad, you're angry, you're not in a good mood, you know. And uh, you say, "Well, you don't know what I'm going through." Well, I don't, maybe, 
but now the Lord knows. And uh, I'm telling you what God's word teaches us is to show kindness and love to people. It's very important to reach people. And we'll reach them that way too. We sure will. All right? Uh, let's bow our heads and pray, and then we'll go to uh, the prayer side And while uh, Aaron's getting us changed over there. Father, we thank you for your kindness and love. Thank you for the privilege to not stand. And, and uh, I thank you for your word and your word of encouragement, Lord, the encouragement that comes from your word as we read and and view in it every day and study and and see things. We see things where we're wrong and we ask you to right those, Lord. We see ways in where we can be a better light to people. We ask you to help and strengthen us there. And we see ways where we can be a better testimony in places we work and places we go to and, and in the church we serve here, Lord. And we ask your strength there. Now we thank you and we love you. Thank you for the people that's come this way tonight. And we praise you for them in Christ's holy name. Amen. Aaron, tell me there when you get...